Hello, in this video I'm going to look at the work of the booking agents, what they do, how they make their money and how they assist with an artist's career. Hello, uh, so in this uh, short video I'm going to talk about the work of the booking agent, uh, how they work for their clients and how they make money. And the screen shows the players in the live music business. We've looked at the artist manager and their relationship with the artist. And it may come to the point when the artist is getting so successful that the artist manager isn't able to get the artist bigger and better shows, just doesn't have the connections, whatever the reason. A booking agent will then become involved. A talent agent is someone who works for her client and gets them appearances in film, TV, commercials, etc. A booking agent is a type of talent agent who gets her client bookings, show bookings, hence the term booking agent. A booking agent makes money by charging a commission on the gross performance fee they negotiate for their artist. So similar to that of the artist management, if an artist generates money from a live performance and it's been booked by a booking agent, then the booking agent takes a slice of that total performance fee. The slice is usually 10% of the gross performance fee, and I'll show you some figures later on. And that 10% is pretty standard worldwide. It was set by the US entertainment unions and the screen shows sag aftras website. They are one of the unions who negotiated this back in the day. However, specialised DJ booking agents who book deep house, house, techno DJs charge 15% gross commission as they are often involved in the booking of the actual travel, airfare, hotels and stuff as well. So a booking agent works on this gross commission, it's 10%. So it, to be a successful booking agent, it really is a numbers game. You have to have a lot of artists in order to generate significant income. The screen shows an example. So for every show that the booking agent is booking for one particular band and she's able to get $1,000 for them, for their performance, she's making $100. At the bum gravy level, you know, these, these fees might be like $50 or $100 performance fees and she's getting 10% of that. At the watershed level, obviously we're talking $2 million, $3 million and she's getting 10% of that. So a, a, a booking agent can only exist if they've got fair few acts at the complete broad scale of fee earning in order to generate commissions. Most booking agents work for the major booking agencies, which I'll introduce you to in a second, and the, those booking agents will have targets. They'll have to create so many bookings per quarter in order to fulfil those targets. And there, there are industry rumours about what those targets are. Regardless, it means that a booking agent has to have quite a few acts. They will have a large roster of acts in order to generate the necessary commissions. So who are these booking agents? Well, I put a list in the uh, description below of various agencies who genre specific or just worldwide. The two that you should know about are Endeavour, part of William Morris or formerly William Morris or renamed Will Endeavour. I, I can't really keep up with what it is, but Endeavour on one side and the other one, big one is CAA. Both North American, both with offices worldwide who handle absolutely everywhere. And if you go onto their websites, you can see their various A-list clients. And if you do want to know about agencies and music agencies, then I totally recommend this book, Powerhouse, which is the story of CAA. Uh, but it describes the inner workings of a successful agency in, in great detail. It's just a series of interviews that have been transcribed. It's a really easy read. 
and I've mentioned quite a few times the importance of live music is it's a measure of an artist's success and also it's a it's a, one of the significant revenue streams for an artist and because of that the music agency business has been through a series of mergers and acquisitions in the last 15 years and the screen shows a, a grab from an article from Polestar, which is an industry trade magazine, which describes these turmoils, these, these, these um, mergers and acquisitions and agents decamping and forming their own agencies, which never existed before because the booking agency business just trundled along. But now as live music has become so important and booking agents are perceived as being extremely powerful, these mergers and acquisitions have become more common. And I do say that, you know, yes, booking agents are the most powerful people in the whole music business. They control access to the talent. And if we consider live music to be the most important part of an artist's sphere of activities, then yes, these booking agents control them. Uh, you have to go through the booking agency so they have that perceived power. And also because of the revenue... They have access to these cash very early on in the booking process, which we'll go through in the subsequent uh, series of this training. I would also say that getting a booking agent is almost more difficult than getting a major label deal. You cannot hire a booking agent. A booking agent will come to an artist when the artist has a certain level of success, i.e. they're selling out certain rooms regularly, or they have a certain management in place, or they've signed to a, to a record company anyway. The booking agent, because of those commission figures, needs to know that the artist is capable of, of sustaining a live career with a certain level of revenue throughout their career. So it's a, just a short video, but it lays the ground of what booking agents do, which is going to become more relevant to you as we go through this series of videos, and it is a series, so please try and watch them in order if you're finding it useful then i'll just ask you please to like and subscribe and thanks very much for watching